Hello YouTube, I recently did an experiment where I made a ton of people mad and a ton of people happy, you know, the usual stuff. I want to talk just a little bit about it today, maybe not get too far into the technicals, but talk about a high level what I did and why it makes a lot of people angry. At a theoretical level, this benchmark I did wasn't really a benchmark, and I always say that up front. Um, you know, I'm not into doing the hardcore benchmarks. I could care less. But I did hit a chord with a lot of people based on the reaction that I've had. I think about 30,000 people have read this so far. A lot of shares, things like that. At the end of the day, basically what I did is I think there's a lot of cluster fatigue going on. People know that distributed compute like Spark, etc., Snowflake, Databricks, whoever, it's very expensive stuff. They charge a lot. And basically everybody's been using those on data sets that aren't even that big. For example, I generated a 650 gigabyte data set in the Delta Lake format on S3. And if you were an engineer to day sitting there data engineering you had to basically do something on that 650 gigabytes of data most people just simply reach for distributed compute like spark or snowflake or whatever right because they just hear that in their mind 650 gigabytes and they say there's no way I have to use something big. It's just built into their brain, even though literally that's not really that big at all. But they just know, oh, you know, I don't have an EC2 instance that's big. I'm never going to run it that big. Maybe they'll let me let me run a 32 gigabyte machine at the largest. So I'm not even going to bother. Right. It will never work when in fact it does work. It's not cheap to crunch 650 gigabytes of data on a Spark cluster. And we all know that, you know, piling up DBUs is expensive. And we at the same time know as data engineers that tools have changed a lot. You may have a 650 gigabyte data set sitting out there. How much data is actually read by Spark and crunched and whatever, it's like we don't know, but everybody's used to pandas and, and it just breaks on anything and they just say there's no way this is going to work. We just have to use a distributed platform if we have data sets that are approaching a terabyte or something like that because their instances just aren't that big. But things have changed a lot. We have DuckDB, Polars, Daft, etc. These tools run on a single node and they're very fast and they can work on large data sets just based on, you know, the 650 gigabyte data sets in Parquet format. The tools are smart enough to like look and be able to read and stream things in memory and they're very fast and they don't necessarily read everything into memory. So you can use them on large data sets, quote unquote, and they work fine. You don't need to use big clusters, distributed compute that cost a lot of money. So I just wanted to continue to push this narrative of, hey, just because you have a large data set doesn't mean you need to use distributed compute. You can use these other tools and they work fine and they're fast. At the end of the day you have to make a choice a lot of times when you're making pipelines do we use in the lake house do we go with spark so many nodes snowflake whatever some distributed thing or can we just can we really use duckdb polars just these little fellas on a single node will they work can they consume these data sets yes they can what i did is i made a delta lake table in s3 and i filled it with 650 gigabytes of data I was going to go with a terabyte, but I just got tired of waiting. And basically, I just wanted to get a smallish sized EC2 instances, install DuckDB Polars and DAF, and just run them. And will they choke on it, or will they run fine? Because most people don't think about using these tools when they're talking about data this, uh, this size. They just assume you have to use distributed compute, and that's not the case. I'm not going to bore you with this giant code that generated the 650 gigabytes of data into an S3 Delta Lake table, but I did it. You can see at the end of the show, and basically this is what the data set looked like. It was basically just generate a bunch of social media posts, fake of course, and likes and things like that, whatever, 650 gigabytes of data. And again, this is not a super structured, hey, you know, this is how much memory is being actually consumed at the end of the day. I'm just making a point to people that like, hey, I can take a 32 gigabyte machine and point it with DuckDB, Polars, or Daft at a 650 gig gigabyte data set and it'll be fine. It can handle it. You don't have to use Spark, which is what most people do regardless. So here's the instance I decided to use. 32 gigabytes of memory, 16 CPUs, C5, 4X large. There we go. What can happen? And again, it's easy to set this up. I used UV the great Python tooling in it, big test, change the directory, add Delta Lake, Polars, DAF, DuckDB, NumPy, Pandas, whatever. Bam, there it is. I just wanted to run this simple aggregation on the 650 gigabytes of data. Scan the entire table, basically group by the date, the post date of somebody's social media post, and then just count the number of posts. So meaning whatever tool does it's going to have to do some shuffle, right? It's going to have to read Every single row, of course, it will not read necessarily everything depending on the tool, but it'll have to read that and 
basically every single file of that 650 gigabytes it'll have to you know shuffle around the dates be able to keep that in memory do the count in a lazy manner so it doesn't blow the machine up can this happen it's a simple query but this is what runs a lot 650 gigabyte data is very small but at the same time according to a lot of studies done by aws most of the data sets are actually smaller than this that people are running also by the way i did run this on a databricks cluster of the same size a 32 gigabyte machine less cores just a single node, because I wanted to see what would happen. DuckDB was first. And here is the code. It's very simple, very straightforward. Just point it at the table. There is my simple query. Run it, time it. Not bad. It came out to about 16 minutes and it worked. 32 gigabyte machine, Ubuntu, Linux. Easy, DuckDB, 16 minutes. Not bad at all, right? We can deal with that. Again, I just wrote the results out to a file. You can see the results of the file there, no problem. It did the job well, 16 minutes. It was able to scan through 650 gigabyte data set. Again, what was it reading into memory? I don't know and I don't care, but it was able to do it. Polars was second. The code looks virtually similar. Similar. I just used the data frame API instead of SQL, did the exact same thing, exact same code group by account. And again, that actually ran even faster, 12 minutes. Wow, that was pretty quick. No problems at all. I decided to try Daft third. It looks very similar to the Polars, pretty much exactly. I took a little bit longer. It took about 50 minutes, but you know, it did it in the end. And then PySpark. I didn't mess around. I left the shuffle partitions the same. I didn't touch it at all. Just vanilla notebook attached to 32 gigabyte cluster, single node on Databricks without messing with any Spark settings, which of course I could, but I didn't. I just ran it. The exact same thing that I just ran in those other ones. Didn't touch it at all. And it took over an hour. So it was actually the slowest if we look. DuckDB is right there, close. Polar's as fast as Daft and PySpark up there. What's the key takeaway? I'm not trying to run some super complicated thing and say, hey, you have to get rid of PySpark and Databricks and Snowflake. What I'm saying is we have options. These tools like DuckDB and Polar's, they are fast and they can work on large data sets them with the ability to stream through memory and not consume up memory and out of memory you know errors combined with ability of lake house tooling like iceberg and delta lake based on parquet files that you don't necessarily have to read every column to run some query like a csv file for example that you can work on very large data sets with these tools and it's a lot cheaper, I'll tell you that much, and they're fast. I had so many people mad about me that I wrote this, they're saying, I don't even know what they say, because honestly, I don't read that crap. But again, this is more theoretical to me, of like, people, you can do this, I don't know why you're not doing it. I understand that data platforms, like Databricks are great, I use them every day. They're an entire platform, they're very integrated together, they work awesome, I love them. They're very expensive, and to be a good data engineer, you should reach for the right tool at the right time, and you know, running Polars or DuckDB for 12 to 15 minutes on a large data set to get some analytics is very cheap. It's much cheaper than a PySpark query that isn't tuned running on a very big cluster that doesn't need to be run there. So I think the future is bright and I hope you learned something today.